Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron and this is the November 2014 Genesis Model Show. Now coming up in the show we're going to be having an inbox review of a BF109G Royal Class inbox review there. We've got the HMS Victories getting started. We've also got all our other builds that are going on being released for November. Um, the usual kit release news. Um, we're also going to have a look at the new workshop, a little sneak peek into that as that develops. We've got October's winner we've got the new competition for November uh, plus the usual news and more so let's get started with the show and let's have a nice look at um, Eddard's 148 scale BF 109 G in the Royal Class Edition Hello there and welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bobby Waldron in this video we're going to be having a nice inbox review of Eddard's Royal Class BF109G. Now this is the um, the new sort of tooling of um, the BF109G um, but if you go onto Dennis Models website you will see um, a um, rapid video build of building the BF109E. Um, it's the same kit, same mould apart from they've changed the mold slightly to make it a G version um, and this has been released as a Royal Class and the Royal Class basically means it's a nice bees knees kit. A bit on the expensive side but you do get a hell of a lot with it and as you can see just on the side here these are all the different markings you can do uh, which is what 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16 um, different markings you can do there which is an absolute heap load of decals. So let's open this up and let's have a quick look um, what's in the box as it is before I actually start um, opening stuff up. Well, first off, the sprues. Now, you get two um, canopy sprues, and that is because you get two uh, BF109G, so you get two kits that you can build here, so sort of um, nicely side by side. Um, we have um, a separately bagged piece here um, as well with our fuselage sections, same with our wing sections as well. Uh, and then we have two identical bags here which have um, all our bits and bobs, cockpit, um, propellers, all that kind of thing. Uh, two sprues in there to do all those little bits and bobs and as, you say, as I say you get two so that you can make two aircraft. Right? Um, what we also have in here, um, we've got a bunch of aftermarket parts. We have um, these nice new fabric seat belts uh, that Eddard's been doing. We've got canopy masks here as well. Uh, we've got two lots of stencils here which is um, going to be rather cool as well. Um, we have um, actually, I'll probably show you that later, but basically it's a, a certificate of authenticity for um, something cool that you get with the kit. Um, we've got a massive instruction booklet here with all our um, bits and bobs in there. Um, moving along, we have this massive decal sheet going on in here. Um, we also have um, this sort of thing that you can sort of go off and you collect stuff if you want to go down that line. Um, I haven't really looked up on that. Um, and then in here, um, I, I do believe we've got a coaster in here, but we'll open that up in a bit. Um, in here we have some sort of a special ornament, which we'll open that up in a bit as well. Um, and also in this box we've got like a nice beer, beer mug, we'll open that up in a sec as well. And then we've also got a box with some nice resin pieces in there. So I'm going to do some research, open this all up and um, we'll have a closer look. So let's get started with the instructions and please bear in mind that you know this kit is heavily based on the E version so a lot of this is going to be the same so I'm going to quickly go through these and not kind of um, look over things more than once. So um, cockpit is all basically the same, I know it's going to be a G version so it's a little bit different. Um, the advantage with this is um, you know we get the fabric seat belts 
with this kit. You also do get the photo etch seat belt with this as well, so you can pick and choose uh, what you want um, to use. That's rather good. Um, next big difference really is the engine cowl section. Now with the E version, um, you had it so that you had an engine inside there and you could choose to put the uh, engine cowl on or off but with this one it is just two halves that come together um, and you'll also notice that um, there is no engine that comes with this so that's basically the biggest um, difference is the whole engine section there is no engine in there it's two halves come together we've got different exhausts and and everything going on here so uh, you know that's the biggest difference but everything else you know is pretty much the same maybe they've put a you know different recessed panel lines here and there for like the G version but you know that is sort of your big difference now with the raw class version you do get some nice bits of exterior detail as well because you get the extra bit of photo etch for the exterior um, you do get resin wheels as well which is rather nice and it shows you how to do all that um, again more photo etch um, detail there um, moving along, uh, all seems to be the same as the E, um, but then we get to this bit at the end, which is, um, you know, we can have like these MG pods, we can have rocket pods, nice bits of photo etch and res uh, photo etch and resin pieces that build up these extra beefy weapons for the G version. So um, that is going to be rather nice and cool. And the actually the. Um, the um, MG pod, you can have it open and closed and show off like the 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 workings inside the um, MG pod. Then we have canopy mass for this for both aircraft. Um, it does the canopy and it also does um, the wheels as well. So you got wheel masks with it as well. Then we have this absolutely gorgeous, nice glossy, uh, well semi glossy, um, good quality paper in colour, showing us all of these absolutely gorgeous um, schemes that we can do with the gorgeous decals that we get with this as well. Um, so many different camo packs patterns um, in different colours you know you really are sport for choice yes you've got two kits you can build but um, you know uh, some of these aircrafts you, you know you want to do do them all it's not just uh, German ones as well we've got stuff uh, Romanian um, Swedish Air, the Swiss Air Force and everything so you know it's um, not just all German um, and then at the back you know you've got the usual um, stencils so that's the instructions right and I just want to kind of get out and show you um, the decals here now we have stencils uh, these are made by um, Eddard these are Eddard's decals these decals do work nice I've used them before they are good decals um, but what we do get is these absolutely stunning um, decals here Right, this is for all these different markings. We've got lots and lots of nice decals, uh, different squadrons and everything. Very, very, very nice stuff. And then down the bottom here, you know, we do have dials for our decals. Uh, I know we've got lots of nice photo etching and everything, but it's nice to have the option if you want that so and these are printed by cartographer made in Italy so we know that we these are the best decals in the world so we're gonna have no problems with them um, looking at the sprues uh, you know these are kind of like standard um, little bits and bobs here and there there's like maybe one or two that are slightly different from the version um, but I don't think I should really kind of go through all them um, um, in here we do have, um, well actually we have four um, um, I can't forget what it's called now, um, the, the middle bit of the aircraft, you know what I mean, um, fuselage section that was it, four of them, what this means is, is um, uh, basically it's something like you can do the G246 um, lots of different versions so you really have got four separate molded fuselage sections that has slight differences that make them um, um, the different types which is really really nice of Eddard to like do that um, it really is really um, really shows um, shows off Eddard there and then again here we have um, 
four um, sets of wings so that you can have these slight differences. Um, maybe I could just open them up and we can have a maybe a quick look at the slight differences. Let's get this open. Let's add. And um, you know, as I've, as I've said in the uh, rapid video build, you know, the surface detail on these is absolutely gorgeous. It's the next generation style surface detail, you know, with all that nice um, different size rivets and um, different size recess panel lines, lots and lots of detail. But if we could maybe put a couple of these up against each other and see what differences there are we can see what Eddard's playing on well these two actually look the same and as far as I can tell ah, the difference I'm seeing here is the uh, the top wing we've got this bulge just going on there whereas the the other two hasn't so I mean it's only a slight slight difference um, but there you go we've got another one here with a bulge as well in fact it almost looks like that is the only difference you've, you've got two that has this bulge and then you've got another two that doesn't so I suppose you can make two of either so um, that's basically just a quick look at them it's just slight little differences which you don't really get with um, other manufacturers I mean they will literally just go off and go let's make a piece for these two bulges Right, um, and, and stuff like that. There's probably panel lines and stuff slightly in different positions. Now we come to like um, all our um, different sort of bits of aftermarket part that you get with this. Because um, this kit, by the way, costs £75.20 from Hanans RRP. Um, I have found with the Royal Class stuff that it does um, it does go down in price um, you, you know you shop around and you will find it for um, lower prices than that so actually you know I don't really hold 75 pounds 20 is the price that you're gonna pay so that is Eddard's Royal class a very nice uh, very nice kit there you can see the full length being released in November so um, what we got coming up well just wanted to shout out to um, the phantom group build now the phantom group build finishes on December the 14th so uh, for all you guys who are working on one I mean there's some absolutely fan fantastic work going in there um, and I'd really like to see you all finish I mean a lot of you have already finished um, but I'd like to see you all finish because it'd be nice to um, you know see all your work finished on time and then I've got the hard hard task of actually um, somehow sort of picking a winner uh, as well as um, the best newcomer and the most original it's going to be a really hard one from what I've seen so far uh, and because that is on the 14th of December um, I'll probably announce the winners in the January show um, and I've also got to go off and order the trophies and get your names nicely engraved on them so um, yeah it's going to take a little bit of time to to do that so January show should be a nice announcement for that um, we've also got I mean you members on the forum have um, basically been wanting to set up your own group build so um, Mike and Nigel 56 uh, has been made moderators and they've got in the group build section their own little section where they're basically organizing a nice forum group build where um, you know it's all about miniatures basically you can go in there and paint miniatures um, I think they even talked about actually helping and showing you how to like um, paint miniatures as well so um, if you're interested in miniatures or you want to kind of maybe um, you know learn a bit about uh, miniatures there's a nice little group build going on down there now um, that is remember a members run group build um, so really Genesis models we don't really um, sort of have anything to do with it you know I mean in the sense of putting prizes in there and everything and, and doing any sort of voting you know it's just Mike and Nigel they're running it um, and it's their show basically um, so um, hope you'll have a, a look at that um, next up as well is I've been mentioning about 
the new workshop and you know the workshop has now um, well I've managed to now build it into something we can have a little sneak peek at um, because we're going to be moving in there soon so um, um, take a look at this little um, sneak peek at the new Genesis Models workshop Hello there and welcome to the new Genesis Models um, workshop as you can see here now I just thought I'd just quickly sort of you know um, put you up to date with what is actually you know going on with the new workshop because I have mentioned that I'm building it and I've done the foundations and all this stuff so now I'm just kind of showing you where I am now um, now next month we should hopefully be in here because as you can see um, we've got you know all the wood nicely in here it's all cladded roofs on um, all those kind of things um, and basically all I've got to do now is we're going to be soundproofing it, um, insulating it, plaster boards on and all those kind of things, getting the electrics in and whatnot. So hopefully we'll be in here um, for November and it's sort of going to be not complete but we're going to be in here um, and it's going to be around about after Christmas where we're actually going to get all these sort of the studio style of stuff done um, sometime after Christmas which is going to be sort of like LED lights and um, desks and all this kind of stuff so um, hopefully um, you're going to look forward to the new workshop because it means um, it means lots of things basically because um, uh, and actually I'm seeing those things happening right now uh, i.e. the HMS Victory now the HMS Victory build that's going on um, that model is like 1.2 meters long and about a metre high. Now in the old workshop um, you know it's just too big to go onto the workbench and actually build that thing. Um, you know at the moment I've done up to about issue four so it's not that big at the moment but by the time we're in here we're going to be all good and, and the reason is because this is like bigger and better and everything I mean the workbench is literally going to be all of this wall going round to here and all over there so we're gonna be able to um, build models of that scale and that size um, not saying I'm gonna build these kind of models but to give you some more examples is you know the new Hong Kong models that are coming out you know B17 the Lancaster all 132nd scale which are gonna be absolute beasts you know we can accommodate those kind of kits now um, and, and generally it's just going to be um, you know a nice improvement all around I mean just to let you know a couple of other features I mean as I say you know soundproofing um, the actual workshop so we've got no outside noise going on a dog barking or a police car going past or something um, you know soundproofing is going to be an improvement as well plus uh, you know the lighting and everything we're going to be putting like proper studio lighting in here and um, you know potentially having more than one cameras going so different camera angles you know it's just all going to be a nice nice big improvement um, so um, if you are interested in say um, how I'm building this workshop i.e. you know the different layers of soundproofing and sort of a bit of woodwork then uh, you know feel free to go onto the Genesis Models forum and in the um, where I'm going to post this show just leave your comments you know uh, do you want to see how things are done in here you know I could do like a little special video because I know how you know you all need a man cave you know whether you go down the bottom of the garden in the shed in your attic in your cellar a spare room or something I mean normally they are kind of like cold places, attics, lofts, sheds, you know, and, you know, we want to kind of warm them up. And I could go through, you know, showing you a bit of woodwork, how to do that to, like, improve sort of like your modelling man cave as well. So, um, you know, let me know if you want to see more and I'll show you more. Um, next month, as I say, we'll be in here, fingers crossed. So we'll be doing our first show in here and, um, you know, we can probably have a little bit of a, a, a walk around as well to show you a bit more. So, uh, you know, hopefully you're going to like the improvements that are going to be coming up and um, I'll keep you informed about what's going on here. So uh, let's get back to the show. 
And so that is the um, the new workshop. Cannot wait to get in there. And what I've got in my head, it's just going to look uh, hopefully fantastic and um, should benefit you all in your viewing pleasure. Now, um, what I'm going to talk about now is what builds are coming up for November. Well, we've still got the MiG-21 um, coming through nicely. Um, we'll have a little clip about that in a bit. Um, Mosquito, you know, that's coming along as well. And as you can see, you know, I'm just getting through and working on the deck stage of this but you'll you'll see it get to about this stage um, in November as well um, we did talk about the um, making masks for your roundels um, you'll see that in November personally I just prefer to put the decals on to be honest I mean it does look better when you put your own roundels on there but me personally it's just so much hassle to do it and if you do put your decals on properly you know your decals can look just as just as well not as good okay but can still look good if you put your decals on properly um, so that's me personally but I'll show you how to do it anyway if you are interested in that um, what is also coming along is the HMS victory build now uh, that I did say I was going to release an episode um, last month, but with building the workshop and everything, I did get a little bit behind. But it's going to be released soon. It's going to be released first episode, the seventh of November, and this is where we've got up to so far. We've just got the the front keel um, sort of put in there, and you know the video will show you how to get to this stage. Um, and then I do believe next month we're going to be doing. Um, a lifeboat so you know that should be kind of interesting because we're going to probably do a bit of um, um, uh, planking on that as well as well as sort of building this up a little bit more too so hopefully you're going to enjoy that first episode so uh, you know it's definitely worth a look and hopefully I'll see you guys get on board with that um, so let's have a couple of clips to just give you an idea of what is actually coming up November As you can see, these canopies now are all nicely masked up, nicely on the inside. Um, it's looking quite clear now where our um, liquid mask is, and um, that's because it's all nice and dry. Also did it on the top as well, as you can see there. Um, video on the Genesis Models website under tutorials on you know how to make your own canopy mask, because I made my own canopy mask for um, the outer side of our canopy and used the actual ones that come with a kit on the inside. Um, did forget to mention actually, I mean this is just my personal preference, but um, I was showing you putting the canopy masks on the inside of uh, our front part of the canopy, um, but me personally, I don't really bother. When, it, when it's like in this position where it's like not gonna be seen, I just, you know, just, I just stick them on as they are with canopy masks on the top. It's I'm only doing the inside because as I say, you know, we're gonna see this canopy because it leans to the side and we're gonna see on the inside. That's just me personally. So now what we want to do, um, we want to get this glued in. Now before we do any gluing, right, always give it one last little bit of a rub on the inside with an anti-static cloth just to make sure we've got no little marks that might have come in there um, or any kind of hairs or anything like this it's going to be an open canopy so um, we haven't got to worry too much it's when we have those closed canopies where it's like you come to the end and you unmask all the canopy and it's like if there's any marks in there they're pretty much staying there unless you start breaking open canopies now when it comes to gluing a um, couple ways of doing it um, Super glue is a definite no-no. If we super glued that down onto there, yes, it's going to be pretty rock solid, but we can have that white mistiness come up um, onto the canopies and it just leaves a mess. Um, in saying that, um, you know, there are certain situations where you can use super glue on canopies, but when attaching a canopy to the actual model, never ever use super glue. 
Um, the other way is, you know, we've also got our canopy glues, um, which they are good. They do take a bit of time to dry, um, and you know, they're 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 quite easy to to um, um, clean up any mistakes, and they're a lot more forgiving. But me personally, when it comes to the front part of a canopy, I like to just come along with Tammy or Extra Thin Cement. Um, but you've got to be careful when using it, right? We just want to, and let's bring you in a bit closer here, because the cool thing with clear parts is you can really see how good the capillary action is with um, Tamiox Fin Cement. So I'm just going to dab it into a corner there and just see how that just flowed in and underneath. I'm going to dab a little corner again, and you can just see it nicely getting underneath there. And then we can just do the other side as well and maybe just get a little bit in the front. So I'm just only getting a little bit on my brush. Just getting in there, just nicely at the front. Right, and that's gonna be nicely locked down. But when actually coming along and putting um, this Tamiya Extra Thin Cement on, you really, really do not wanna to be touching with your brush our um, actual canopy mask here, Atamia masking tape. If you touch that on an edge, that capillary action is going to get in and underneath the canopy mask and it will ruin um, your canopy and we really don't want that. Um, so that's going to go down uh, rather nicely now. It, it just, I'd use, tam I, I prefer Tamiya Extra Thin Cement because um, it welds the two plastics together and it just makes it more of a better seal. Um, but I only like doing the front one. Uh, when it comes to the rear one, if we was to have this canopy closed, I would um, come along with um, canopy glue on the rear one. And, and the reason for this is because um, if we do have any problems, to rip open this canopy, this rear one, after putting um, normal canopy glue on, um, it's just so easy to rip it off. Um, tidy up whatever the problem is and put it back there. And, um, if we glued it down with Tammy Extra Thin Cement, you know, as I say, these two pieces of plastic were glued together and it would just be solid um, to get it off. Um, so that's what I personally prefer. But we're all good because actually, yeah, this is going to be canopy off. Now, when it comes to canopy off as well, what I like to do is I like to actually. Um, leave this canopy off right and we're gonna spray that up separately and right at the end we can just glue that on um, but what I like to do just getting out um, some 16 mil Tamiya masking tape let's just get you out a little bit and what we're gonna do all right is we're just gonna mask onto this right just nicely so that we get all the the sides. Just try and get it to go down. Uh, cotton wool bud, always a good one. Just to maybe make sure it's nicely pushed down. Just like so. Maybe get a, a blade and just sort of make sure the corners are in. All right, we just wanna make sure this masking tape is down and is not going to be going anywhere. So there we go, our red's nicely dried. We've even put a little light bit of a gloss coat on using our, our future there, just so it kind of locks it in and because we're going to now put decals on top of this. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get back our um, bigger sort of circular donut going on here right and what we want to do is we just want to precisely place it in here right as nicely as you possibly can get it right and the reason why we're doing this um, is because it just makes it a hell of a lot easier to line up our smaller circle just here perfectly right because i mean we could come along use the mark one eyeball and try and get it as precisely in the middle as possible but by putting this piece back in we can then put our circle 
in position on that piece just there right. and then that then should be perfectly in the middle so we can then pull back up our big donut and as I say that should now be perfectly in the middle nicely masking up our red now um, what we probably want to do at this stage is get back out our white right I want to get that white out um, come back in nice and neat just quickly pouring it in the colour cup and then we just want to sort of basically prime this up ready for the blue right so again you know keep it nice and light so we don't have anything bleeding through underneath the, uh, the, the um, masking tape so that is basically done there so I mean really a quick colour change with our airbrush here I'm just gonna whack in some homebrew finish just to start with right and we're gonna do the usual trick of hold the end let it nicely bubble up so it kind of works all that um, white paint out there and then tip it upside down so we get all the nasty bits coming out the colour cup end and not through the needle end and then you know I like to then switch to um, the airbrush cleaner by Vallejo nice airbrush cleaner this is all right so again we'll do the little bubbling trick all right you might not want to be so close to your model when you do this because um, any kind of splashes that come up while you're bubbling it and goes on your model and it can be quite nasty um, you know you've even got to be careful it doesn't go in your eyes as well all right so we'll just kind of basically blast through keep pouring in blast through keep flicking it back until that is nice and clean coming through there now the colour I'm going to be using for our blue is, you know, this Insignia Blue by um, Valasia Model Air 71091. Really nice blue. It literally is just kind of like spot on. So we're just going to pull this in neat as well. Just like so. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to nicely spray this just on top. This will be like our final little coat now. And I'm just going to nicely spray it nice and light. Right. Making sure we don't spray it on really wet and get it underneath our masking tape. So keep on. You know, applying a little coat, drying it off, apply a little coat, dry it off, right, until we've got this nice blue going on here. And then really you want to leave that to dry before you start ripping off the masking tape. HMS Victory, flagship of the most epic naval battle in British history. Discover and build Britain's greatest warship. Issue by issue, build HMS Victory in stunning detail with this perfect scale model. Now available exclusively through Model Space. Start building your HMS Victory today. Go online to modelspace.co.uk now and find out how to claim this amazing toolkit absolutely free. Now we come to issue two, and in issue two we've got these nice ribs um, to put together, but what we need to do, we need to get them really, really nice, flat and straight, because we don't want any of this, um, bring them together, and we don't want it sort of being slight angles, not lined up, wobbling about, we need it to be nice and flat. So let's get out our glue and get kick started with this. All right, and we just put our glue on, remember to like nicely sand down where your joint's going to be, just help the, the glue bond that a little bit better. We've got little holes, um, well these hard to reach places just in there. Try and zap some in. All right, if you do like overdo it maybe a little bit with the glue, you know, it's okay because it's only going to ooze out and we just clean it up. I like to just sort of work these in. All right, and then we get um, a nice cotton wool bud or even a kitchen paper towel, right? Kitchen paper towel, 
a little bit moist and we can just sort of wipe it up and even sort of work the glue into any sort of gaps as well. Right, so we make sure that's all, all good. Right, we also, with the cotton wool bud, that bit of glue that's just oozing out there, I mean it might be that we might end up putting a piece on top of there, I don't know, so we want to wipe that up just in case you know it, it dries and then you've got this sort of lump of glue there and you might not be able to put a piece on top of here very well. I'm not sure that we do, but you know, just in case we do, just make sure you're nice, clean and tidy. Now to make sure this is gonna go nice, flat and straight, what we're gonna do, I've just got some, um, it's like acrylic uh, flat sheets, two of them. Um, I've left the sticky stuff on on, on here so that because um, you know it is going to be sort of it might bond a bit to this, but you know it will just peel off quite quite nicely actually. Put one on underneath. All right, we put one on top. We come in with some clamps. Right, and we just want to clamp it down. And what's basically going to happen here? is we're using two nice, hard, flat surfaces and then we're cl clamp clamping them down nice and tight so we know that that is going to glue in a perfect flat position. Right, leave that to dry for maybe an hour and that should be all good and hopefully as you can see just in there you know that's going to leave that nice and flat. Just the way um, I've just done this one, the um, um, number 14 piece, nice rib going on there and number 14 will nicely slot in like so. Now before you run off and start gluing in, do not glue these ribs in um, yet, right? You're going to have a lot of ribs that are going to go all the way across here, across the, uh, the keel um, you want to glue them in when we start looking at putting the deck in on top because it needs to sort of line up better. If we don't sort of um, wait until then, it can, you know, be hard for the task um, ahead. So leave these unglued. You can just slot them in just to see how they look and make sure they're, they're um, slotted nicely and whatnot. Um, and then that brings us then to uh, issue three. Now, in issue three, we have. Um, you know another one of these um, pieces which one is it it's number 15 it's gonna go just in just in here um, we don't have to bother about that piece yet um, we've got some more of these um, this is uh, pieces 9 so these are gonna go either side of our pieces 8 just like so I've shown you how to do that so I'm not gonna you know bore you to death right but what we've got here we've got the, um, the the middle keel part right and this piece needs to slot in just like so right so let's get out our glue and start whacking in now with this bit we can put loads of glue right do not worry about over gluing this one and I'll show you why in a bit Right, and we're just going to slot this in. So that is what is coming up for November, so hopefully you're going to look forward um, to watching them. But um, what we've also got is because our um, Panzer Free finished last month, it means we've got another video build on the way, and to be totally honest with you, um, I've not even started building it yet. It's actually in the post on the way here. I'm not going to tell you what it is. All I'm going to say is it's going to be released on the 7th of November, which is kind of nice because you've got the HMS Victory starting on the 7th of November as well. But here's a little clue of what it's going to be. If you think it can't get worse, it can, and it will. The dying's not done, the killing's not done. I promised my crew a long time ago I'd keep them alive. I was afraid you were dead. Where's the rest of the Urpitan? We're it. Sergeant Collier, I'm your new assistant driver. 
pink school? That's home. You've never even seen the inside of a tank. You will. I started this war killing Germans in Africa. Now I'm killing Germans in Germany. Been with these fine gentlemen for years. These troops get by you. We're all dead in the water. All we got is you. I won't ask you to do anything I haven't done myself. Comm check. Photo check. Grady check. Bond check. Bravo check. are peaceful. History is violent. Wait till you see it. See what? What a man can do to another man. I'm scared. I'm scared too. It will end soon. But before it does, a lot more people gotta die. Well, you know we do get a dollar thirty-five a day, right? <laughs> Best job I ever had. Best job I ever had. Best job I ever had. They're coming. How many? 300 of them. There's five against 300. Well, you never run before. Why are we going to run now? We're still in this fight. We're still in this fight. Now. So there's a nice little clue of what's going to be the next step-by-step -step video build here at Genesis Models and it's a, video, uh, a, a movie that I'm going to be going to see very soon and by the sounds of it from you guys on the forum, you, uh, quite a few of you are going to be going to see it. So now we come to part of the show where we're going to announce the October 2014 competition winner and that was for... Uh, a Great Wall Hobbies F-15 BD um, Israeli Air Force and US Air Force 2-in-1 148 scale um, looks like a really really cracking kit there is a nice inbox review of this on the Genesis Models website um, so who is going to be the winner? Well after doing a random number generation program and counting down the thread I came to Postman 1967 so congratulations to you you are the winner of our F-15 here I'll give you an email and get your mailing address and ship this out to you free of charge so congratulations for that um, now there is another chance to win another prize which is going to be the November competition 2014 so um, just stay tuned uh, and I'll announce what that is going to be but until then um, let's have a look at our kit release news for the past month Hello there and welcome to the Genesis Models kit release news November 2014. First up we have the 148 scale aircraft. Our first one is a Hazagoe Kawanashi uh, N1K1JB Shiden and that is at £29.99. We have a Hazagoe Mitsubishi BF109F4 at £29.99. We also have Hazagoe again with the Mitsubishi F2A at £42.99. Hazagoe again with a Kawasaki T4 Red Dolphins at £32.99. Now we have our AFE Club MiG-28, believe it or not, from the Top Gun movie, and that is uh, £35.99. Italia brings out a Fiat G91 Pan at £24.99. Kitty Hawk Models brings out a TF9J Cougar at £32.99, as well as the F35C Lightning II at £44.92, and and a BAE Sea Harrier FA2 at £31.99. They also release a nice bit of diorama of the USN Deck Plus T45 um, diorama set for £64.99. And Revell released their F15E Strike Eagle for £26.99. Next up, we have 135th scale armor. Uh, starting off with the AFV Club 
M24 Chaffee light tank for £41.99. Uh, Atelier uh, releases a range of World War uh, sorry, World of Tanks Ferdinand at £39.99 as well as a World of Tanks Tiger 1 at £39.99 uh, also World of Tanks M4 Sherman at £29.99 and a M24 Chaffee uh, at £29.99 and then we have finally a Ming Models M3 A3 Bradley at £32.99 uh, thank you for listening and that is all for our kit release news for November 2014 so that is the kit release news for last month. Now we come to the part of the show um, which is the November 2014 competition. Now to be in it, to win it, all you've got to do is go to Genesis Models forum and on the forum you will see um, the competition section in the competition section you will see November 2014 competition in there. Just simply make a post, one single post, no double posting, um, saying count me in or something to that effect and you're entered into this November 2014 competition and the prizes are going to be uh, first off we have air fixes brand spanking new tool of a Supermarine Spitfire Mark VB um, looks like a nice kit I've had a little quick little look in there and it does look like a nice little Spitfire it doesn't look as good as the Eddard, but it is a Mark 5B not a Mark 9 um, and Eddard kits are normally a bit cheaper but it does still look like a good kit um, and this is 148 scale by Airfix the other kit we're going to be uh, giving away is also a P39LN uh, 148 scale Provi pack by Ed Eddard so that's two kits two be one um, and all you've got to do is as I say make a post in the competition section and I'll announce the winner just the way I did uh, for the October competition winner I'll announce it in the uh, December 2014 show and you know they get shipped off free of charge as well um, so that's the competitions uh, for this month um, and sadly we've now come to the end of the show so I'm going to get cracking on my builds I'm going to get cracking on building the workshop as well um, so until next time here's a couple of pictures of what you guys have done on the forum here at Genesis Models. So until next time, my name's Bobby Walder and this is Genesis Models and I hope you've enjoyed.